So I said, in the posture of this direct making, the spirit of his father, he said, I dining on the stood by books. The number of years wherefore the word of God came to Jeremiah the prophet, so that was two, chapter 9, that it would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. In other words, Daniel had known that prophet Jeremiah from reading the books, and Daniel was captured with all other captives from Jerusalem and taken to Babylon by the Babylonians. He was enslaved. We know that he lived in the king's palace for a long time. And we know that God promoted him because of his holy life. How they put him in the lion's den and refused that he would not pray to any of God except his own God. I was saved in a miraculous manner from the den of lions. So it was after all this that he came to understand by the books that are read. That this prophet Jeremiah would have died a long time before they had prophesied that God would send his people away from the promised land, which is Jerusalem, to a foreign land for 70 years. And during those 70 years, the land of Israel would lie fallow and desolate, and nobody living there. So he understood from reading the books, the historical books, what the prophet had said. Let's go to the book of 2 Chronicles 36, verse 21. 2 Chronicles 36, verse 21. 2 Chronicles 36, verse 21, and that says that to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah until the land had enjoyed the Sabbath, for as long as the, as the, as the land lay desolate, she kept Sabbath with to fulfill three score and ten years. That was a prophecy of Jeremiah the prophet. That's actually in Jeremiah 26, verses 6 and 7. Jeremiah 26, verses 6 and 7. It says that, Then will I make this house like Shiloh, I will make this city a curse to all the nations of the earth. So the priests and the prophets and all the people who had Jeremiah speaking these words in the house of the Lord. So that was the Lord, what he spoke to them. That God was going to banish them for 70 years. The land will lie fallow. Will lie in the Sabbath, enjoy the Sabbath. That means the land will not be cultivated. It will rest for 70 years. So Daniel knew of that because I read the books. Well, which book have you read recently to know what's going to happen to you? There's only one book you need to read. And that book is God's book, the Bible. When was the last time that you opened the Bible to read it, to know the plan of God for your life, for your family, for your career, for your job? When was the last time you wanted to search and know about your future? Many of you don't bother to read your Bible. You just go from one church to another, from one prophet to another, trying to get prophecy. Prophecy when actually the, the prophecy is in your hand. Bible says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. If you read the word of God, God will reveal to you in those words his plan for your life. Maybe you are wondering who you are going to marry, where you are going to walk, what kind of car to buy. And all those questions are right in your heart. But you haven't bothered to read the Bible, you haven't bothered to read God's word, you just Going to this prophet, going to that prophet, going to this church, and find out God's plan for you when actually in your hands is the solution. So Daniel purposed he purposed he had read the books in heart and he sought and he said, I set my face unto the Lord God to seek thy prayer supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord. So he wanted to confirm what that, what, whether that prophecy was going to be fulfilled or not. He had read about it, and of course, he had been in uh, Babylon you know, in his youth. He grew up there. But he began to think God, have we really going to spend 70 years in this land? 
of investment in Israel. I want to know the real truth. And we read this in the book. I want you to confirm it to me. How many times have you sought the Lord on matters that you're not sure of? Hmm? How many times have you called the Lord? How did you do this? You, know, you want to hear from God your future, what will happen to you, which time to walk, which wife to marry, which others. You don't have to go to any prophets. You just have to kneel down, pray to God, fast, and call, humble yourself before God, and God will happen to you. That's what Daniel did. He said he set his face unto the Lord God to sit by prayer and supplications. And this is the number we're going to read today. So he fasted as a sackcloth and ashes. Well, yes, it's all very good to pray. Why do we have to fast and lay in ashes and sackcloth? Because we wanted to hear clearly from God. There's a difference between normal prayer and prayer with fasting. Prayer with fasting is more powerful. You can hear more clearly, you can see more clearly because it's not your spirits. And your flesh. If you are praying without fasting, your flesh is very strong. And it may block God's revealing his message to you. It's not that you may not hear it. You can see here, but not as well as if you are fasting. Uh, why do you think Moses fasted 40 days and 40 nights? Why do you think uh, Elijah fasted 40 days? Why do you think that when Jesus Christ was to fast 40 days in the wilderness when he was tempted by Satan? Because when you fast and you pray, you engage the spiritual forces of heaven, the dead forces are empowered on your behalf to fight the battle for you. It's the greatest weapon of warfare you are going to have. For many of you, as I don't want to fast, some of you believe that if you do fast, you die, and all this nonsense. No. Daniel was not doing warfare, he wanted to know the truth. Went to hear clearly from him. And he knew that the only way to do that was to pray and fast. So in chapter 44, 7, verse 14. Chapter 44, 7, verse 14. And he says, If my people who are called by my name, see, see, if my people which are called by my name, as you do and I, shall humble themselves and pray. So, you humble yourself when you go into prayer and you fast. And prayer, seek my face. That's what Daniel was. He was seeking God's face. I mean, seeking God's answer, God's confirmation, God's direction about his people. And turn from the wicked ways, that means repentance. You don't be fasting, as in the fighting people, cursing out people, bearing a grudge and hatred in your heart against your fellow human beings. You pass through the past already, you're not going to eat. And I'm talking about because then they that hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins. Please note, forgive their sins is number one thing that has to happen in your past. Your sins have to be forgiven. When your sins are forgiven, that God can begin to speak with you clearly. Because you are no longer under condemnation that's take. The barrier between you and God has been removed when your sins are forgiven. So then we have to forgive their sins and we can heal their land. So healing, restoration, deliverance comes after your sins are forgiven. And that will, before that happens, you would have humbled yourself by prayer and fasting and humble yourself before God. But the Jews used to wear sackcloth and they would lie in ashes as an external sign of mourning. They would wear sackcloth and it's sacks. An excellent sign, but God is asking for an inner repentance, inner sorrowfulness. So, Daniel said that was the way he wanted to get confirmation of, from God about what he had read in the books, the prophecy of Jeremiah. Now, listen to his prayer. He said, I prayed unto God my God and made my confession. Please note, he made his confession. Many of you pray to God and say, God is your mate. The Lord, that one is our own that. <laughs> you don't know that even God, to even answer you is a grace. He 
think is the only that God answers. Do you know how many people are praying to God? And you want him to come right there and do your own bidding. What's so special about you? Hmm? Out of all the other six billion people on this earth. He said he made his confession. That's the first thing he did. You come to God as a sinner. That's the first thing you must do. You must confess your sins before God. If you come to God, and this church is peculiar for that because in our own other service we have confession of sins as the number one thing in your prayer. Even before you make any supplication, the first psalm is Psalm 31, which is the psalm of confession of your sins. Because if you come to God without confessing your sins, that sin will stand before your prayer and will prevent your prayer from being answered. These are the techniques to having your prayer answered. If you want God to even open his ear to your prayer, the first thing you must do is confess your sins before God. And I said, O oh Lord, the great and merciful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. So the first thing is that he confessed the Lordship of God. He told him that he knew who he was, that you are a great and merciful God, but that you keep the covenant and mercy to those that love you. And I keep your commandments. In other words, I know you, God, I know your nature. You always fulfill the commandments to those who love and keep your commandments. The reason why I say that was we're going to follow that with that rebellion against God. In other words, God, you are right. The only thing you serve by judging us, but we have followed us. This is a good way to be able to listen to you. Why do you want to listen to that prayer? Say, ah, this man Daniel knows me. He knows how to get my attention. Look at him confessing the sins of their people. That was actually interceding, standing the gap for his people. You see, he first of all made confession. God, you are mighty. You are a dreadful God to keep coming to those who don't have uh, uh, a mercy to those that love you and keep your commandments. That was your really righteous God. Well, what does he say in Psalm 25? The Bible. Says, Bible says, verse 5, verse 25, verse 14. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his countenance. See? The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his countenance. You want to know the secrets of the Lord? What is you, what, your future that nobody knows? Your future wife? The future presidents, you want to know, then begin to fear him. That means obey his commandments. He will show you his covenants. So he says, We have seen, so that's the next thing. He began to say, God, you are righteous, you are holy, you keep covenant with those who love and obey you. That was saying, God, I know this is you. Then he began to talk to God about. The sins of his people. He said he didn't exalt himself. He didn't say these people have sinned. He said we. That means he included himself. Because truly he was part of them. You cannot be praying for people and be saying they. No, 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 no. They are going to say, but you must include yourself because you have escaped for the sacrifice. He said we have sinned and committed iniquity. We have done wickedly and have rebelled. People are dividing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. This is the confession. He was confessing the sins of the people, including himself, how they rebelled against God's authority, how they followed idols, and they didn't listen to his prophets. 1 Kings 8 47. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 47. And it says, If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them and deliver them to the enemy. Oh, sorry. Yet if they shall bethink themselves of the land, whether they will carry captives and repent and make supplication to thee in the land of them that carry them captives, saying, We have sinned and have done wickedly perversely, we have committed wickedness. Has so returned to thee with all their heart, for thy soul in the land of thy enemies, be that they will captive, and pray unto thee towards thy land, be that give us the fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have given to thy name. Then hear that thy prayer and thy supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, and maintain thy cross. See? If we shall repent and turn to thee. That was Solomon's prayer of dedication in the temple. 
then you see that that kept him confessing the sins because he really was grieved in the spirit. He knew that the reason why they had him to that home was because of the idolatry uh, finding his God. And I wanted to hear those voice, but he knew that he had to confess these sins first. Had he gone to God and just to see God, can you tell me what's going to happen? Nothing would have happened to him. Not like any answer. Because that sin would have blocked that prayer. Well, it's in the Bible. You know, that God says, my, my hand is not shutting on my head there. I cannot save you, but your sins have separated you from God. Isaiah 59, verse 1. Isaiah 59 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, I cannot save. Neither is ear heavy, I cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. See? So if you don't confess your sins when you pray, that sin will block your prayer. It will not let God hear you. It's like as a dark cloud preventing your prayer from going through. So if you're not going to be found with blood, that hinders your iniquity, that leaves us open lies, and your tongue that mutter perverseness. There are many of you who believe that you don't have to confess any sin that you are righteous already. That is the spirit of religion, that you feel self-righteousness, and you don't get anywhere. Remember the story of those two men who went to pray in the temple? Of Luke. And one of them was a Pharisee, a religious person. The other was a publican who was buried with a sinner and a tax collector. So the Pharisee prayed to God and said, I can't go around like this man, referring to the publican, that I pray to you so many times a day, I fast, I pay my tithes. The Bible says that his prayer did not leave the room. Where the publican who was buried with a sinner, we don't even come near the altar. It's too powerful. It tells someone clean, someone worthy for God, and beat his chest and say, Lord, have mercy upon me, sinner. And because it's his prayer, was heard by God, and yet they're justified. Yeah. So God wants you and I to humble ourselves before him, to confess our sins as simple as before him, to admit that we are guilty before him. Then and only then can God have mercy and cancel our sins. And it continues, neither have we hearkened that we have seen the potent iniquity of all wickedly, and rebelled even by departing from the precepts and from the judgments, neither have we hearkened unto thy servants the prophets, which speak in thy name to our kings and princes and our fathers all people of the land. So he was confessing one by one how the people had rebelled. They refused to listen to the prophets who God sent to preach to them that they should repent. Remember Jonah was sent by God to Nineveh. You tell them that in 40 days, they never be destroyed. And uh, what happened? <laughs> the king had, and everybody, the king put on start talk and commanded everybody to fast and turn from the wicked ways. And when God saw the change of heart, he cancelled the plan to destroy them. It's a good example that God can change his mind if he repents of the wickedness and humble himself before him. The same thing happened with Ahab when he was sent. Elijah went to give him a prophecy, and the Bible says that he humbled himself before God, and God did not do what he planned to do against him. God wants us to humble us. Don't say, Oh, I'm not a sinner. I don't drink. I don't do this. I'm this and that. Who are you? <laughs> the Bible says, For we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. He said, No, none is righteous. No, not one. But the Bible says that our righteousness, you that you guys are holy, is like filthy rags before God compared to God's righteousness. So you don't think yourself as nothing. Don't think yourself as something. Think yourself as nothing before God. That's the only time that you get God's attention to your situation. It says, All the righteousness belongeth unto thee. What was confusion of faces? That means shame. As of this day, to the men of Judah, to the hands of Jerusalem, to all Israel that are near and far, to all the countries where you have driven them because of their trespass, that they trespass against thee. See? God drove them out from the land he gave to them. Because when they got to that land, they turned against God and began to worship idols and commit iniquity. And there are many of you today who have been removed from your 
I am not a position which God gives you as a gift because you started. But once you got there, you began to communicate, to take bribes, sleep with different kinds of men and women, and do ungodly things. And the next thing you knew, you have been cast away and retrenched or sacked from that position. There are many people that God has blessed till they had part of their lives. They were very successful. But if you look at them today, they are down the streets begging, or you've never heard of them again. Because when they got to the level of promise, they turned against God. Because of the wealth, the fame, the success, and all this uh, people will say, yes sir, yes sir. They gave, turned their hearts against God, and God rejected them. The good case is Solomon. God bless Solomon mightily. Yeah, because of that blessing, what happened? Marriage, you know, six, uh, seven hundred wives had to pay for their concubines. And then they turned his heart against God. And God eventually, you know, got angry at him. See? So be very careful wherever you are. The only way you can maintain that place is to live according to God's commandments. So you have to say, God, you are righteous. You know, we are the ones that have failed you. You know, all of us belong in confusion of taste, our kings, our princes, and our fathers, because of sin against the sin. Now you have to break it down. He didn't just say we. He said the kings, the princes, the fathers, the people they have found. So the Lord has got no mercy and forgiveness. Now he's trying to now that from the begging. Having said that God, you are great, you keep your command, your, your covenant with those who love you. But we have sinned against you. And now it says that. But we know that you are a God of mercy and forgiveness. Now, now despite our sinfulness, as we confess our sins before you, you are merciful and you forgive us our sins. What a prayer. You and I have to learn a lot from this prayer because this prayer went straight to heaven. And it should. If you pray like this, I have given 100 percent guarantee that God will answer your prayers. It says, to God belong mercy. Let's go to verse 1, Psalm 130, verses 4 and 7. So he said, Lord, we know you are a God of mercy and forgiveness. Even though we have sinned against you, I believe, we believe that you are a mercy who will show us mercy. That's exactly what I was praying for. Mercy and forgiveness. And you use God's word to remind him of that. You see, this is why you need to know the word of God and what you're praying. Because when you quote God's word to him, it impresses God a lot. It means that you have read the Bible, you know what God is about, and you can stand on God's promises and make a demand for those promises. So I want to tell you that's part of seven. So that there's forgiveness with thee that you may be feared. So let me just open the Lord, verse seven, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption. Plenteous redemption. God can redeem you. That was, it's never too late, whatever you've done. If you can only confess that sin and say, Lord, I'm guilty as a child, I'm sorry, I messed up, I should have done what I did, I'm sorry, Lord, God will forgive you. You know, King David, he not only had an affair with Bathsheba, another man's wife, but also a rape, killed that man. Did you know that? You ran? First hmm? Kings of Bible, that one. Uh, the seven kings, etc., etc., and so on. But God forgive you. See? So don't think you've gone too far from God that, oh, you don't know, Pastor, you don't know what I've done. I don't need to know. All I need to know is that God is a God of mercy and forgiveness. So that you can confess to Him and humble yourself before Him, show Him that you're sorry and repent. He will show Him and forgive you. Because that's why Jesus died. He didn't shed. Lord, it's for you to have a very you to come back to God, whatever you have done. See? So it says, the Lord, Lord, mercy and forgiveness, but though we have rebelled against him, he says, though we have sinned against you, Lord, but we know we are God that forgives. We are merciful God. In that, have we obeyed the words of the Lord that was walking his God, which said before us by servant of prophets? Yes, all Israel have transgressed. What is transgression? It means breaking or going against. Laying down laws. So all these are transcribed by law. See, even by departing, that they might not obey the voice, your voice, 
Therefore, the curse is upon us. You see? When you transgress the law of God, you commit a sin, and you open the door for the cause of destruction to come upon your life. Many of you are joking with sin. You don't know the devastation you are opening up your life to by that sin you are committing. You are playing with sin, and exactly the, the church has gone away from God with this feeling. The church has minimized the terrible effects of sin. And so the church is not powerless because sin is ruling in the church. You see? He said, the, because we didn't obey your voice, the cross came upon us, was poured upon us. Can you imagine? That pouring water <laughs> and it was limitless, the crosses. Well, if you are covenant with God, you are covenant with for the blessings and if you disobey the crosses. It's in Psalm 28. It's there. The first 15 verses are for the blessings if you obey. But then from 15 to 64, it's all crosses if you disobey. So, if you are covenant with God, you must remember that two sides are covenants. The blessings if you obey, and the curses if you disobey. I said, after all that's written in the law of Moses, that's the covenant requirement of the servant of God. Because we have sinned against him. Let's go to Isaiah 1, Isaiah 1, 4 to 6. Then Deuteronomy 26, 14. Then Deuteronomy 26, 14. It's good to know your Bible so that nobody is deceives you. People are deceiving you, it's okay. To commit adultery once in a while, it's okay to smoke, it's okay to, to have an affair with a uh, mouse, but all these evil things, and they minimize the seriousness of sin. Do you know that it is because of sin, humanity, humanity, that Jesus Christ had to die and shed his precious blood? Only his death could cancel our sins. That's how serious sin is. And many of you say, oh, if I commit sin, I just ask for forgiveness. No. That sin may serve as consequences. You know, God forgave King David for committing adultery with Bathsheba and killing his her husband. But from the day uh, King David committed that act, his life was never the same. He went downhill to the dead. His children raped and killed each other. Two of his children tried to restore him from the throne. You know, one of his children had an affair. With all his wives in full public view. So, sin has consequences. It is not a joking matter. It will destroy, it will bring a curse upon your life. So, then, because 26, that's. Then, uh, because 26, I'm going to find the last down. Of the Leviticus, yes, 26 verse 4. Yes. So all who shall transgress against thy law. You know? 26 verse 14. Okay. That says, Leviticus 26 verse 14. It says, But if you would not hearken to me, I will not do all these commandments. And it goes on to the list. All the denominations that were called the Bible, the Israelites, as they refused to obey God. Isaiah 1 4 to 6 is what God said about the people who are very Isaiah 1 4 to 6. Look at Isaiah 21, this is 4 to 6. And it says, A simple nation, a people living with iniquity, a seed of evil doers, children. That are corrupt us, they have forsaken the Lord, they have provoked the Holy One of Israel to anger, they have gone in the backward. Why should you be stricken anymore? Will you revolve, you will revolve more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faints. From the soul of the foot, even of the head, there is no soundness in it. From the wounds and bruises and fortifying swords, they have not been chosen that power of death and magnified the ointments. Some of the sinfulness of the people. See? So from the whole head to the foot is all sin. The whole nation has committed sin against God. Sin brings judgment. Sin brings a curse. It's better for you not to sin than to now ask forgiveness because that sin itself, even if you're forgiven, has 
take consequences. And this is the last talk of our final line that the uh, says, and I confirm his words, which he speak against us, against the judges, the judges, by bringing upon us a great evil. See? Sin opens the door for judgment for evil to come upon that person. One of the whole act and tell I don't know what has been done for the rest of them. They suffer a great evil. There was a time the people of Israel were eating their children. It was a time that God would judge them. And that's one of the causes in the book of Israel 28, that they would eat and boil their children because of famine. And they brought up their iniquities. He continues, says, when the Lord Moses, all these things come upon us, yet made we not a prayer before the Lord our God that we may turn from our iniquities and understand our truth. So he was telling God that despite all these judgments, God expelled them from the land, they became uh, were enslaved for 70 years, and they did not even turn to God. So yet made we not a prayer before the Lord our God. How many of you have that God in judgment now and you're not going to pray to God? Whether you're busy running health and skelter from one prayer house or another, from one prayer to another, from one prayer house to another, seeking a solution to your problem, not knowing that your problem is because of your sinfulness and iniquity. You rather hear from somebody that is your mother in law or your friend or whatever that is doing you. When really in reality it is your rebellion against God. Failure to live a holy life of selfishness, your failure to read the word of God, failure to pray, that will open the door for Satan to attack you. You know? You don't do that, rather, you keep on searching for solution everywhere else. And you have not prayed to God, you have not asked forgiveness. That's why the problem is still there. See, because that sin is standing in the midst of progress, it's standing in the midst of deliverance. You must confess that sin, admit your guilt, say you're sorry, repent. Then God sees that you're repentant. He will turn his hand to make a way for your life. That's what uh, Daniel was saying. So that's my favorite. All this evil came upon them. Yet they did not pray to God and ask for forgiveness. See? Lamentations 2 17, Isaiah 9 13. Isaiah 9 13. So whenever you're going through difficulties in your life, the first thing you want to do is go to God and Ask God, begin to repent of your sins. Ask God to have mercy upon you. Confess your sins before Him. Don't start praying warfare prayer when, in actual fact, you are the one that's guilty. And you're warring against the unknown witch or wizard when actually you are the problem. But as that man as it says, for all the people turned not from Him and smited them, neither did they seek the Lord of hope. See? So was the Lord that smote them? They didn't turn to Him. We are going out to the for solution elsewhere, seeking the Havadis, we talk to all these people. When you are the cause of the problem, and God is waiting for you to repent and turn to Him and, and feel sorry for your sins and confess your sins, no. It's easier for you to go and blame somebody else and try and get help when you are actually the problem. And so, he says that they didn't turn to Him, and they are people like that. Well, Problems now in their lives, they've lost their job, they've done this and done that, primarily because of their sinfulness against God and their rebellion against Him. But they will not see that because it's always easier to blame somebody else. They rather blame somebody else than to say, Lord, I'm sorry, I've committed sin against you. I've not read it, I've not prayed, I've not attended the church, I've not. When you confess like that, it makes it easier for God to turn his own way of judgment on you. Then we yet may be not a prayer before the Lord our God that we may turn from our iniquities and understand the truth. Said so you receive not because you pray not. When was that time you prayed and asked God to forgive you because of your sinfulness, because of your iniquity? How many of you do that? Very few. Because you all believe that you are perfect, you are going to heaven, you don't need any repentance, all these fallacies. You know, you must learn to accept the guilt because you we human beings we eat sin like food. And we drink sin like water. You know, if you go to um, the book of uh, James chapter four. This from whence 
was born, James chapter 4 was born, from whence comes war of idols among you? Come they not hence from your lust that war in your remembrance? You lust and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. So you cannot obtain. You fight and war yet you have not because you ask not. That's what your prayerlessness. They ask us, they are more busy doing spiritual works, running health and skeleton and all this stuff. Kneeling down and praying to God. You know, praying is a sacrifice. And some of you, you have to learn that. No, we'd rather have somebody pray for you. You are enjoying sleeping there, so you pay somebody money to go and do some work for you. No, no, your own prayer is most important. So you ask and receive not because you ask and miss that you may continue in your loss. So you and all of us and all of us is knowing you know that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. See? Very straightforward. So it continues. Therefore the Lord watch upon the evil and pray upon us, for the Lord our God is righteous in all his works, which he doeth, but we obey not his voice. It is from coming again that the judgment, the punishment they received. Was because of what's righteousness. What does righteousness mean? Righteousness means God will do what is right in all circumstances. In other words, He will judge you if you do what is wrong, and He will bless you if you do what is right. That's what it means to be a righteous judge. So God will watch over the evil, to perform the evil upon them, to judge them, to penalize them for their iniquities, because they are righteous God. So the righteous God will not overlook sin. No. Commit sin, you will suffer the consequences of it unless you repent. So now, O Lord our God, you have brought to this people from the land of Egypt the mighty hand, has gotten their renown to this day. We have sinned, we have done wickedly. So he kept on repeating that word. We have sinned, we have done wickedly. That is confession. In other words, God, I have nothing to say to you except for you to forgive us because you have sinned and wanted to forgive. You have no mark on God of anything. That's exactly what he was saying. He's speaking and begging God. Oh Lord, I call to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, I beg thee, you see. I call to your righteousness, and you are a righteous God, and you say that if that we repent and humble ourselves before you, and turn from the case, you will forgive our sins. That's what he's saying, demanding God of his righteousness. I beg you, let your anger and your fury return away from the seeds of Jerusalem, your holy mountain, because of our sins and the iniquities of your fathers, Jerusalem, and other people. And become a reproach to all that about us. Say, Lord, have mercy and forgive us. <laughs> Turn your anger away from us because our land has become what is rich a reproach that people pass by and shake their heads. Now, therefore, our God, hear the prayer of thy servants. Say, the Lord, hear my prayer. Hmm? The only thing is, every prayer that God hears, no. It's only prayer, people pray the right way. That God hears their prayer. That's how many people pray and say they know because their prayer has been led to them. But they didn't pray the right way. They didn't confess their sins. They didn't humble themselves before God. They just came and said, Lord, give me this, give me that. Of course, you know, you don't get anything like that. Now, I can't the prayer of the servant and his supplications and cause your face to shine upon your sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake. Cause your face to shine. That means, Lord, turn again towards your place. The sanctuary in Jerusalem is being destroyed. Because of face to shine a very powerful word. You know, once again, look upon us with mercy. Number 625. Number 625. Number 625. Number 625. Mm. So this is a prayer that you yourself can pray. That God has caused his face. Shine upon you once again as we've been before. You know, because now God has turned away from you because of your wickedness. Mm-hmm. Number 625. Yes, uh huh. Uh huh, see? See, the Lord makes his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you, and the Lord lifts up his castle upon you and give you peace. This is the prayer that God told Abraham to for his people. And it says, Oh my God, incline that ear and hear, open that ears, eyes, and behold that desolation. Now, oh God, look on us in pity. Open your ears to our prayer. Look how we've been destroyed, and the city which you call by your name 
but we do not present expeditions before you. We do not present expeditions before you for our righteousness, but for our ingrained masses. <laughs> the Lord, I'm begging you, not because we are right, or we are holy, or we are doing anything to deserve this. But we are only doing this because we are a righteous God and because of the great masses. This prayer is actually a perfect prayer of supplication. See, Daniel was standing in the gap on behalf of his people of Israel that been expelled and judged by God after 70 years and yet have pleaded God to have mercy. And he made it is very clear that Lord, we have sinned against you. We, our fathers, our generations, we are not worthy of anything. We're only coming because we know a God that merciful and forgives. So that's what your word says. Say, Oh Lord, hear. Oh Lord, forgive. Oh Lord, happy on you too. Be firm. So don't delay for your own sake, oh my God. You call it your city. Now call my name. What a wonderful prayer. You and I need to pray that kind of prayer every time. Supplicate so for God. So ask for forgiveness. You cannot get anything from God unless that sin in your life is removed. How can your sin be cancelled? Well, Jesus already paid the price for removing your sin. But have you taken advantage of that? I'm asking you today when you are, whether you are born again on this bit of fog. Because when you are born again, all the sins you have committed are cancelled. And you can be new one baby. If you have not been born again, then you need to be born again. Because right now, the sins are blocking your prayers. And you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven with those sins. It's only when the sins are removed that you are renamed to the book of life and that you can enter the kingdom of heaven. So if you have not been born again, if you haven't had a drastic experience with God, whoever, you consider your heart. You turn from wickedness, righteousness, begin to do, do the things of God. If you haven't had that experience, most likely you are not born again. Uh, you may be a prophet, you may be an evangelist, you may be a Simon or a woman, you may have been in the church for five, five years. It does not mean that you are born again, or that you are born again when enter hell. No. It's not your church attendance that matters, but your personal relationship with Christ. So, if you're in that situation, you want to have an experience of being born again, you want your name to be written for life, just say this simple prayer with me Oh Lord, God, I have sinned against you in every my wicked way. Have mercy and forgive me my sins today. Wash my sins in the precious blood. I come inside my heart and begin to rule and reign my life. I take my name from the book of death and put my name in the book of life. That is, those that will be counted among those in heaven. And I promise to serve you all the days of my life. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yes. If you said that prayer, you meant it from the bottom of your heart. You acknowledge it that you have sinned against God. You are not denying yourself, you are not living in fool's paradise. You truly confess your sins before God and you cry to Him to have mercy and forgive you. He will come in and cancel every single sin you've committed since you were born till this time. Now, maybe you're 40 years of age, you're 50 years of age, doesn't matter. The day you said that prayer, in the of your heart, every sin committed to that point is cancelled. You become a newborn baby. As a newborn baby, with no record of sin against the record. And you start your walk to the kingdom of heaven. You will feel very different. Your life will change because now you will love the things of God because it's a new spirit inside you. You're a new creature. And you will turn away from all those bad, bad things you used to do. And people will notice. You don't have to tell anybody you're born again. You can say, something has happened to you. You're not your usual self. You're not the person you used to know. But God said, you're a new person, a new creation. And never existed before. Even though you have the same body, same appearance, but a different spirit inside you. Let us praise you, oh my Jesus Christ, oh my God. Thank you once again for the precious words of our spiritual hearts today. Father, let the spirit of repentance come inside our hearts that we can be convicted and made to feel guilty for our sinfulness and iniquity, our transgression against the law. That we may indeed now repent and turn to you with a new heart to follow you and to worship you for the rest of our days. Father, as we 
beg you have mercy upon us today. Because we've all sinned against you one way or another. Don't judge us according to our sins, even if you deserve it. Because we know you're a faithful God who is able to forgive us. Father, well, forgive us our sins today. Wash our sins away with the precious blood of the Lamb. And we begin to worship you and inherit the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of Jesus Christ, the one who prepared before us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Please read this passage again. Let us on it. Let God speak to you through these words and give you a revelation of this document, this precious as a loving kindness. So we meet again. Take care and God bless. Amen. 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 Just say, He's a miracle walking God. He's a miracle walking God. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's a miracle walking God. Hallelujah. Go on.